Great. Wait, do you want me to adjust it? Yeah. Shoot. Feliz Navidad, everybody, and Merry Christmas. It's fun. And whoa, we just got, I just turned on the light and it's a little strong. Oops. Gives it a weird sort of Christmas glow. Okay. That 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 sort of weird whispering you're hearing is my brother, who's trying to like help me oh, with the lights. So, so here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry for the delay. Oops. Trying to like. This is actually filming, like counterintuitive to what I'm used to. So I'm not sure how to. There we go. I think I got it now. There. Hey, Christina. So, as you can see, we have here two very lovely ladies who are joining us. We have uh, Weaverton and, oops, I, have to, I do have to turn, and Vitoire Rue. Now, you see, they have a nice little Christmas setup here, lounging around a nice Christmas table, uh, glasses for three. What's going on here? Oops, what are they doing? Well, they are here. Oops. Okay, this is better. This is what I should have done. Okay. They are here waiting for the man of the hour, who I am about to present to you now. Roger Moore, the appear the officially licensed. I'm sorry, this is backwards. Oh gosh. Okay. So if this wasn't looking backwards to you. Um, you would see that this would actually say, um, Roger Moore, uh, officially licensed one six scale, uh, by Dragon and Dreams, DID. They have done other James Bond figures before. They have also done, um, other, uh, action figures in the past. So let me go ahead, turn this back this way. I'm going to put him toward the front. This is actually going to be somewhat of a layered. Ooh, sorry, you're going to see. You're going, well, first you're going to see me moving Evelyn. But you're also going to see uh, the shotgun. I think I'm going to go grab something to boost this. One second, everybody. There we go. There we go. Now, I do not know how to reverse this. And I apologize if all of you are thinking, my God, what is happening here? Um, this is a Roger Moore figure. Um, it was designed by Terry O. I want to say it's O'Neill, and that's and that's a worse end than I can make. It's actually pretty amazing. Hey, Christina, do I ever do a sideshow? Funny you should say sideshow because that's where I got my original James Bond figures from. I got them. Hey, Bill, I got my original James Bond figures from sideshow. Um, many years ago. And I do think, um, I'm kind of curious to see how the whole IT selling through Sideshow is going to work. On the one hand, as someone who collects both 1-6 scale figures and fashion dolls, this is good news. But on the other hand, um, I don't know if Sideshow is going to like doll collectors. We tend to be a pretty crazy lot of people. By the way, if anybody knows how I can reverse this so you can actually see what I'm doing. I mean, I'm used to, as a left-handed person, doing everything backwards. So this obviously is the uh, teaser poster, for lack of a better word, which I'm now going to remove along with the foam. And if you notice, Roger actually has a couple of looks. He's here in the attire that he wore in Live and Let Die. <laughs> We're full of drama, it's true. It is true. 
So here's, um, I have no idea how to do this and reverse this. So if somebody's listening in and knows how to reverse this, please do. I like that it's got his signature. Terry O'Neill on the back, Roger Moore. Does come with a nice stand. I have to admit right off the bat, I, I have mixed feelings about um, Dragon in Dreams because they've also done World War II figures. And when I say they've done World War II figures, uh, let's just say they've covered the whole war. Oh, this is interesting. The stand screws in. So you have the screw in stand. So the stand doesn't, once you put in this piece, it does not move. I thought that was a nice touch. Okay. So we're going to leave Roger in the box for a couple minutes while I just very quickly go through uh, the other accessories that will be making this cameo now because I really don't want to talk about guns. Although I will say this is a very nice holster. It does have this piece here that I think is either to go to a belt loop or for an extra clip. And you would, of course, put the gun in here. And this is the shoulder harness, which I never figure out. In Live and Let Die, he does use a couple of different weapons that he doesn't usually use. One of them is the traditional uh, revolver. This feels metallic, so it's very durable. This is not cheap plastic. But the parts, the, the barrel will move. This barrel moves. The, the trigger does not, and I'm sorry, I have no idea what this is. That does not move. The extra clip is in pretty tight, so I don't want to mess with that. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the iconic Wallether PPK. Every James Bond at some point in the storyline has held the PPK in his hand if just to keep the promotion going. Yes, I'm being serious. God bless Cubby Broccoli. He was the first guy to know how to merchandise. So here is the clip. It comes out, but nothing else again moves on here. Not the trigger, not anything else. I do not see a silencer. So, and again, I don't want to really push to get that clip out. I do want to remove Roger. Oh, isn't that curious? We have loose bullets, by the way, for the revolver, which I'm not going to load. But there are three, six. So it's a six shoot. So... Let me entertain you. Let's get Roger in place. I think I'm going to turn out the light because I would like you to see him. Can you guys still see him? And I would like you to see him um, in all of his glory. Okay. This is a remarkably good Roger Moore face sculpt. And, I, and there are two reasons why I say that. The first one is, it's obviously, this is, I mean, yeah, clearly this is Roger Moore. Um, but it is the Roger Moore who just started in the series in Live and Let Die, which was the early 70s. So this also works to being um, the Roger Moore who we knew from The Saint. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get this particular version of him, because this is the, the hairdo and the face. You can use it for both. Thanks for letting me know you can still see his face. Now, that being said, um, there is a little bit of this, uh, that this is Roger as Bond. And the reason I'm saying that is because um, there's another company. I think it is also Dragon and Dreams. They did an unofficial Roger Moore, which was Roger and I think it was... Posh Spice's husband, whose name just went out of my head. Um, God, what the hell? Is, well, anyway, those two were dressed up as guards at Buckingham Palace. 
And in that case, Roger looks even younger. The reason I'm pointing this out is because, and I'm sorry I don't have um, a better pointer than this, but if you can if you can tell, or maybe you can't tell because I have to push it back a little bit, there is gorgeous detailing in the face. He does have lines in the brow. He has a little bit of bagging under the eyes. Um, I'm going to turn the light on again. Hopefully you can, oops, maybe you won't be able to see it. Uh, here we go. I don't know if you can, oops, I turn it like that. Maybe, yeah, you can see it now. Um, he does have a five o'clock shadow, which is not something you usually saw in the saint, but there's the detailing of a five o'clock shadow. It's not fuzz. It's not like this is flocked. It's painted on. But what's really beautiful, and I hope you can see it, I can certainly see it, is there's a gleam in his eye, which there always was, even as he got older. And um, he was much more devoted to UNICEF. Hold that thought. I'm going to have plenty more to say about UNICEF um, in a little bit. But so there's this, so he's got a gleam in his, even though the, the face is kind of serious, you know that he's like, it's sort of like, I'm just waiting for a reason to smile. Gorgeous. Um, just going to turn it this way and give this, and hopefully you can also see that even though this is not real hair, it's molded, there is again, really nice detailing of strands of hair. Very solid. Yeah. And while I'm here, he's got traditional male trousers. I don't believe these pants are lined. Oh wow. Nope. Nope. They are. They are not lined. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, given that they have a they they're cut comfortably, let's say. They're cut comfortably. So I don't think we're gonna have much luck passing this over to fashion royalty because the, it'll fit them, but it might even be too big on them. The other thing I like about this is that he's wearing a very simple, but always, oh my God, they padded him? <gasps> okay. I was not planning on stripping him, but I just felt his chest for the first time ever. David Beckham, thank you. Yes, it's a David Beckham and a very young Roger Moore as Royal Guardsman, also done by DID. Now, again, want to stress, I have never felt Roger Moore ever. I never got the chance to meet him, though I really wish I did. He, he's, I can't say he's my favorite Bond, because that's Pierce Brosnan. But um, he was my Bond growing up. And after 9-11, when my brother and I couldn't take the news anymore, and we started binging on James Bond movies, um, we started watching. So this is inter this is something very much in keeping with DID. They will do a detail like this with like a proper belt buckle and a proper belt, but then they won't go all the way. They won't do hook and eye, and they won't do a zipper. They'll do Velcro. And underneath here, I don't know. Is I guess James Bond is wearing a bulletproof vest. <laughs> I don't know what this is about, but that's funny. That is that is that is very funny that they they I mean, and it's not like Roger was like super athletic. They didn't make him do the Atkins diet to play James Bond. So I have no idea why they just did that. And by they I mean Eon Productions. But I have no idea why they padded his chest. That's this tells me that this is probably um, a narrow or slender body, and they wanted to fill him out a little bit, which, again, I kind of, okay, okay. He needed the sports bra after, our friend Bill here, comedian du jour. Uh, oops, I just dropped the camera. Our friend Bill here, comedian du jour, um, he just said, well, it's a, it's a sports bra. Well, yeah. And yeah, Roger kind of needed one toward the end, but he was getting up there for, um, 
view to a kill. Okay. The belt, I can't, I had a pretty easy time taking it off. And of course, now I can't put it back on. What else is new in my life? Okay, so just. So, come on, work with me here, people. Where is the loop? Did I lose the loop? Okay, here we go. So we'll just leave it like that for right now. Because there is more to this. So I'm going to leave you looking at him for a minute. While I come over here and find out. Because there is supposed to be another ensemble in here. And there is. So if you remove, oops, if you remove the second layer of foam, you have another ensemble. You have, I'm sorry guys, I'm just, I'm sort of distracted because I know the second pair of hands dropped out and I'm looking for them. So you have the white, typical white shirt, interesting striped tie. So let's start with the interesting striped tie. Interesting striped tie. Um, black and silver. You all have... Um, and again, this is something very interesting about DID. Um, they will go. They will sometimes do go the extra mile. So as you can see, there's some detailing in here. I'll turn this back. You can see that there is proper suiting detailing in the seams. It's a single-breasted jacket. It's nicely seamed. This is lined. The jacket is lined. The trousers are not. Um, and they also do like proper buttons, which I then proceed usually to break off. So I'm not gonna screw this up. I'm just gonna put it aside. And I'm going to say that we also have here a nice crisp white shirt. Let's see what they did with this. Sometimes they will, yep. Velcro. So like I said, this is it is a beautiful jacket. This this is what makes this is what makes me crazy about the ID. They will now even here, the the detailing at the cuff is very the cuff will not open, but the detailing at the cuff is nice. They sew it very nicely. And they sew they sew the cuffs very nicely, I guess because you'll see them. But then they'll do Velcro without even like no hook and I will do Velcro. So I also said uh, there were two pairs of hands. These are obviously for him to box or fight. And this is the part where everybody laughs and be like, oh, yeah, pfft, Roger Moore, he fights. Yay. But again, let me just take, let me come in close. If you can see. I wish I could hold the still for you because it's not going to go into uh, it's not going to go into focus. Um, but there is detailing of veins in the hands. So they really they put some thought into this. And there is detailing. Um, let's step him over here. I'm assuming. Yep. There is the same kind of detailing here, too, on his hand. You can see the lines around his knuckles. You can see, um, I've always wondered why 1-6 scales like this. Do they use similar factories? that Everybody uses the same factory, Christina. This is what I've been told. Everybody um, uses the same factories, pretty much. Um, but yes, they do use the same factories, and they do mass produce it. Why not the tux? Well... Um, that's because everybody else's bonds will do tux. Um, I, I was kind of hoping maybe they do the white tux, that look. 
uh, but they haven't. So that's kind of sad. I mean, just I'm just moving some stuff around, guys. Peeping behind the top. So let me. Um, I this is the last foam, so there's nothing else here. But you do have this back, same same back as the as the front. Let you guys take a look at the very nice Christmas diorama I built for you. I built for this. I'll put James next to the tree for a little bit. There you go. Oops. James Bond always leaves you wanting more. There we go. Put him next to the tree. Surprise, I didn't do the tux look. Yeah, we dressed that. Um, pause while I have a drink. Um, so I wanted to, I, if you guys don't mind, I'm just going to very quickly, like, uh, let some other people know that I'm here and I'm live. This is why I keep my phone around. Oops. I'm going to Facebook and I'm going to the pink lounge, letting people know. So please bear, please bear with me as I post. So I just posted to the lounge. I'm actually, I have another figure I'd like to do if you guys will indulge me but I do also want to take a minute to do one other thing if I can with you um Roger Moore besides being James Bond was a hero in real life and what I mean by that is um first of all you never heard a bad story about him ever I mean, the typical fan story goes like this. There was, he when he was traveling one day, little kid comes over and asks him for his autograph. So, of course, he signs it. And about five minutes later, the kid's grandson, the, the kid's grandfather comes over and says, Mr. Moore, I'm sorry to bother you, but my grandson is a little bit confused. You signed the autograph, Roger Moore. He was expecting you to sign it, James Bond. So Roger Moore says, send your grandson back over. And the little kid comes back over and he pulls the kid close and he says, listen, I, I can't go around traveling as James Bond, then Blofeld will find me. So I have to, this is one of my aliases. Don't tell anybody. I mean, that that's, that's the kind of guy he was. And another kind of guy he was, was he was his best friend. One of his best friends was Audrey Hepburn the actress. And Audrey Hepburn spent her adult professional life as a UNICEF ambassador. And when she was dying in the mid 90s, Roger went to see her and said, is there anything I can do for you? And she said, yes, there is. Take over my work at UNICEF. Continue to raise money for children through the UN. Roger said, done. And from 1994 until he passed away a couple of years ago, literally almost right up until the end, he was raising money for the UNICEF Water Fund. There are thousands and thousands of children throughout the world that have clean water because of Roger Moore. And as much as I love him and I will watch his Bond movies over and over again, I love him all the more because of what he's done for UNICEF. So if you will indulge me, this is Sir Roger Moore's website on Facebook. 
very easy to find. Um, what they've done very recently, the Roger Moore family is proud to announce that you and I, the Roger Moore charity song now has an official video through the Roger Moore charity song for less than a pound, which is about a dollar fifty US, or maybe even less than that. Um, you can watch the video, you can buy the song. Yes, I bought the song. So if you like this video, please go visit the Roger Moore Charity Song.org. So Roger, uh, Roger Moore Charity Song ORG. And please make a little donation in Roger's honor. And by the way, the reason I wanted to do, I'm actually going to do another doll, but one of the reasons why I wanted to at least do Roger Moore uh, is because um, there used to be a tradition in the UK where every year BBC would show a Christmas movie. And the Christmas movie would be a James Bond movie. And because nobody else but Roger Moore did as many movies as he's done. I thought it would be kind of cool to just have uh, everybody do this. So now that I've spoken about Roger, I'm going to have Roger come join some very lovely ladies who have been waiting very patiently for him. They have some champagne they have a little champagne they have Oops. There you go. they have some champagne this is of course Victoire Rue she's in a lovely little suit that I bought off of eBay I wish I could remember right now who made this so if you're watching this and you know who you are please like tag yourself in um, this is Joby, um, uh, Joby Torak. This is one of his suits. He was nice enough to make it for me a few years ago. This is, of course, Evelyn Weaverton. And I picked these two to be the Bond girls because I figured, well, oops, where's his elbow? This is about, this is age appropriate. This would have been the age that his Bond girls would and should have been, so. Let's put Victoire, let's have him sitting in between them, there we go. So they've got their champagne, they've got their man, they're very happy. Well, actually, funny you mentioned Poppy Parker, because technically that was Poppy. Remember Poppy? Well, that's the whole reason why we have Poppy at Sideshow, because Sideshow originally had Girl from Integrity. And Girl from Integrity was set in the 60s during that spy craze where you had Roger Moore as the saint, I Spy, Man from Uncle, um, The Prisoner, Get Smart. You had all of these uh, uh, Mission Impossible. You had all of, uh, you know, the argument can be made Wild Wild West. You had all of these great spy shows. Poppy would, I could see Poppy doing like a guest appearance on The Saint, which would have been, it would have been cute. So let's go ahead now and head into our next review. And it is going to be Fashion Royalty Monarch. And as always, you have the stylized box, almost like a cloth with the butterfly motif of the monarch. Does anybody want to guess, Christina, Bill, you want to guess who this is? This is a monarch. Do you want to guess which one it is?
It's going to be, drum roll. It's Tobias. Oops. Big drum roll. No doll. It's Tobias. This is Gene Therapy Tobias uh, Ashford. No, no idea if he's related to Ashford and Simpson. But let's go ahead and take a look at his accessories first. Obviously, we get um, this is actually, you know what? Let's let's take a moment here and, and have this moment. Move this back a little bit. So here you have the integrity hands, which we cannot complain about. Um, much like an action figure hand, not necessarily DID, but a lot of the action figure hands will do the screw in. So, no, I'm sorry. I don't have Art of Manliness. So, if you can see, there's a little bit of detailing here. You do see, like, a little bit of muscle tension in the pose of the hand. But they don't do veins in the hand. So they don't do too much of that. So, this are the extra hands. He also comes with... These very nice booty, silver booty shoes, which of course I will take out and put on him in a little bit. The crinkles, let's open this up. Take a look at the shoe. Very nice detailing of the seaming. Sort of like a corkboard sole, but not really. Obviously, real laces. No watch this time, by the way, with him. He did not come with a watch. He does, however, come with a couple of different rings and a bracelet and some interesting necklaces. It looks like one of the rings is actually on a necklace. And the other is free, and he has the ring and the cuff bracelet. No watch, which I guess they got bored. I guess they figured we have enough watches. And then we get this guy, which I'm sorry, I need to take a moment and speak to this. Okay, so here's my thing. Uh, what is my ultimate verdict? Here's my ultimate verdict is they need to stop with the freaking fanny packs. Because they did this with a few of the homes so far. They also did it with New Face. Stop with the fanny packs. Fanny packs are bad. If The Rock cannot rock a fanny pack, nobody can. Um. Though I have to say, you know, in terms of being able to put stuff in it, I just unzipped this. It's, there are two pockets. Is there two pockets? Nope, this is one front pocket with a double zipper, which means the top will be the same thing. It will, it's like a deep pocket and then an easy access pocket in the front. <sighs> but why? 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 Please. No more fanny packs. Fanny packs are bad, okay? Can we can we have this moment? Can I have this moment to say this? Fanny packs are bad. All right, so I'm going to turn you back to James and the girls while I free Tobias. And I think about the very important question of what's my final verdict. I don't have one because, uh, I mean, for a fashion doll, I like them because they are very poseable. Um, they wear their clothes well. What is your concern, Christina, uh, with them, with the body? Bill, are you agreeing with me on the fanny pack?
I will tell you this right away. Um, what I did like about um, Layers of a Man and Check and Balance was uh, they could stand on their own. And I don't know if it's because I'm not posing his feet right or I don't have the shoes on. But this I have to hold him as I'm talking, which I'm going to continue to do. So let's, since I'm here, might as well just keep talking about it. Um, this is an interesting cut of Gene. First of all, seriously, yes, I know. Um, I know it's a thing to half tuck your shirt in, but seriously, take the fucking second and make a decision. Tuck or untuck. None of this halfway shit, okay? So guess what's going to happen? Guess what's... Oh, okay. Uh, of course, good time to point this out, the difference. Zipper. Hook and eye. Hook and eye. Hook and eye. Zipper. Tuck in the shirt. Oh, very nice. They didn't... Okay, you know what? In the back, it's not tucked in, so guess what? La, la, la. Comes out completely. So let's talk about this. This is definitely denim. It's very soft denim. It is not lined denim, which denim usually wouldn't be anyway. Um... It is the traditional denim color. It's not stone washed or acid washed or anything like that. It's just denim, which I'm perfectly fine with. We'll take a look at his abs in a second, but let me just finish talking about his jeans. His jeans have an interesting um, cut here, like almost you would expect there to be zippers here to convert these, but in this case, it's faux. You're not going to convert the jeans. They're regular full-length jeans. Of course, the pockets in the back, the real loops in case you wanted to put a belt on this. Pockets in the front. They, they appear to be real. I just can't get my finger in. That's what she said. So, let's go ahead and examine the rest of his look. Because I, I, I will take off the shirts just to see the abs. I did not realize this. I thought this was the sweater that came with this. I did not realize. Hang on. I did not realize that the jacket itself had the faux cuff here that feels like a sweater. Again, very soft and ribbed, like it would be a, like it would be romaine sweater, actually. Like they are borrowing each other's clothes, but they're not. This is a very nice jacket. Um, oops, lift it up. Lift his arm up. This pocket is sealed. No suiting, uh, no double, no double stitching for the suiting. Though there is hook and eye to close this, if but I think you would have to take off one of the shirts to close it. Interesting detailing in the back. It's and I don't know why they did this. They gathered it. I'm okay with the butt and the crotch. There is no crotch, Christina. None of these people have crotches. They only there are very few action figures who will actually do a proper a proper male crotch, but I digress. Um yeah. Yeah, love is love is on sale right now. And love and love is love was actually an amazing set in terms of the tailoring. You could see, and I, and I did review it, so if you ever go back and look at my review, there was, there was a definite decision made in terms of the tailoring. Um, you had a very formal tux that was very well fitted to the man, and you took the tux off, and his shirt was immaculately seamed and detailed like it was a custom-made shirt for him. Like, you actually, like, this was his big thing, like, for his tux, he went and got his own tuck shirt. And then you had the more casual, uh, fun jacket 
and the and those trousers and that was a that was a looser fit so that was it that they made some very serious choices about styling with that set i was very surprised to see it go on sale also pissed off but i was pissed off for a couple of reasons i was pissed off because they were giving out free versions of love is love to reviewers and i did not get one uh yeah i know Two Mount Monarchs for the price of one. Yeah, that that does not make me happy, but you know. I'm not by the way, I'm not saying that I want dolls for free, but if they were giving them to reviewers, I would like to think that they would have given me one, but you know, I guess they don't like me. Well, I know for a fact now they don't like me because ha! Let's just say I was part of a little mini revolution back in October and leave it at that which I may or may not be talking about at the end of the year when I may or may not do my Copa Copa Cabana. It's killing YouTube video and scene. Let's get back. So this jacket, by the way, this is, this seems to be a different kind of black than bond suit jacket, which makes sense. Here's bond suit jacket. There's a bit more detailing texture to this material and like i said they did something very goofy they they put this bunching here with again the same ribbing as at the collar and the cuffs i have no idea what the thought process there was mommy doesn't love me i don't know no gentleman's pockets i wish they would do that just once that would make me like hysterically happy if they did the gentleman's pocket in one of these jackets nobody does that and I have never asked for a custom suit, so nobody even does that. I will say, though, this jacket is coming off pretty easily as I'm talking to you. So let me put him down for a second. I'm going to get the booster back. Boost the camera back up. So you can, since we will be now doing more here, okay. take his net off. Did anybody save these? Sometimes I do. Oh, dear God. Okay, we're going to have to spend some time with his hair. But for right now, the rest of the ensemble, he's got, well, he's obviously got this very nice, this is actually something I will forever keep because I like checkered shirts. This is red and blue. Very cute. Breast pocket. Does open. I'm not sure what you would put in there. Maybe a maybe a credit card. The shirt closes with hook and eye. Shirt's gonna come off. Thank you. Uh, and another thing I like, I, I I like you're gonna you're gonna hear this once you start like watching like all of my reviews. I like classic pieces like this. This Heather shirt that you can easily put on from one figure to another because it has give. And this this certainly has give. It's a nice heather gray v-neck long sleeve tee, again, very soft. I don't think I've ever had a had something made by IT where I thought the material was really rough. I've certainly had that with action figures though, where I've had stuff from them and it was really rough. Okay. So he he's got let's just you know what let's lift this up and take a look at his yeah he's definitely cut oh no YouTube nipples oh no oh no Cole Copa I'm showing nipples Copa so anyway, yeah, this is definitely a lot more defined than my original Monarchs, uh, my original homes. Um, honestly, though, I don't spend a lot of time with them shirtless, so I don't really care either way what they do. But I do seriously love this shirt. It is very nice. It, it is soft. It is very typical. This is the kind of thing you put on. I mean... When they call this gene therapy, this is this is it. I mean, this is this is what you put on with your pair of jeans and you're just like going out for coffee and whatever. So 
and you would not need this to pay for it. So let's go ahead and take a look now at his sculpt. He is obviously an African American male, which is awesome. Um, grayish eyes. Let me move him a little. I'm going to move him actually over here. Turn the camera. Do it this way. Nope. There you go. Um, uh, yeah, they are gray eyes. They are grayish eyes, which I don't know is quite real, or maybe he's put contacts in his eyes. Um, he has a faux goatee. Let's move the camera back here. He has a faux, oops. He has a, oh, wait, can I get him to kneel? See, this is the other problem. With the James Bond, I was very quickly able to get him down to do this. This is a little harder. There you go. With the James Bond, they don't plastic the joints. So I was very quickly able to get Roger Moore posed. So if you see here, he's he's quite beautiful. He's got gray eyes, faux beard, natural lips. His ears are not pierced, which is fine because I don't think this particular guy came piercing. Um, now we got this thing going on here, the hair. I mean, I'm not saying anything against natural hair. It is about as fully rooted as it could be. Oops. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Let me move this back. It is about as fully rooted as it could be. The curls are very tight. I'm not sure. This is definitely not, though, the usual uh, type of hair that they've used in the past. This is a diff this is a very different feel thing like feeling it it feels very different so I don't know what kind of hair they're using this time around so um, yeah so that's him uh, so does anybody have let's well let's you know what let's have him join everybody else around the Christmas tree. Unfortunately, I did not get booze for him. I just figured, I, I decided to do uh, Tobias at the last second. Mostly I was just thinking about just doing it with Roger and doing the whole Christmas thing with Roger. So I do agree with you that when you say that uh, the main draw is always the tailoring, it is. And it's, it's always the tailoring here. I mean, again, let's take a look. We can do this close up now. This is IT. It's fully lined. Weird, weird thought process with the whole elastic. But you have this nice vent in the back. Lined, very impressive. Hopefully I will not break the buttons. So what happens with DID when, when they close the jacket is sometimes I'll break the button. And I hate doing that. But on the one hand, it does have the heft that it's supposed to have as a suited jacket. There you go. Now, if you see here, this, this also has the vent. It's also lined, but look at the difference. You have basically one seam here that branches off into the vent. Whereas here, the seam is around the waist. So you do have very different seaming between the two. And this is a thicker lining than this.
And again, now let's take a look at the shirts. This is the white shirt. IT would use hook and eye. And if you look in here, lots of loose string. Whereas in here, so, well, actually, there is. There is a little bit of loose string. There's one loose string. But this is much more finished. And there's much more work in here in terms of cutting and tailoring. So I guess for IT, when they work, I guess, but, but to me, then again, it makes sense because if you're the pieces the, that you're going to have on display that everybody's going to see right away are the, the trousers and the jacket. So you want to put the money in the trouser and the jacket and you can almost get away with like doing a dicky. Some cases I wish they would. They would just do like a front dicky of a white shirt or a tuck shirt because then you have more freedom and movement in the arms. So that's about it for me. Um, I will be doing some more reviews uh, now that school's over. Uh, this I'm, I'm, I do freely admit I teach. Um, uh, so I, I didn't I didn't get as much time this semester, but there were other things going on too. Uh, the whole COPA thing with YouTube, like what they were going to allow us to review, what they wouldn't. So um, I would just again. Oops, somebody wants to buy for me. Oops, sorry. Oh. I'm selling off miniatures, uh, but extras. But again. Um, if you can, and if you would be as so kind as to visit Roger Moore Charity Song, ORG, and make a donation in honor of him. That would actually be pretty awesome and spectacular. And I would love it as if you did that. Well, you well, Ebony, you, you didn't hear from me a lot because um well there's there's several things. One, I have a cat and she likes to take over. Two, I was teaching. Three was the whole COPA thing, which to make a very long story short. Uh, the COPA thing was the Federal Trade Commission is now dictating to YouTube that anything that would be of interest to a child that may make them want to watch the video has to go on their YouTube app. So you have a lot of reviewers like myself, like my brother, game, game reviewers, um, other action figure reviewers freaking out because even though these these reviews or at least my reviews are not made for children we now have to we have to very clearly now say that or they're going to put us on the on the kids app so i mean it was this whole big carfuffle it's still going on i don't know when it's going to end but it was very between that and then there was some drama with integrity right before the convention. I really don't want to get into that either. Um, but it, it was it was kind of annoying for me and I wasn't sure what I was going to do. So anyway, so this is it. So thank you, everybody, for hanging out with me for this hour. It's getting late on the West Coast, on the East Coast. It's almost 1130. Uh, even though I know a lot of us have taken off or have off now, um, you will be seeing me, as I said. Um, I will be doing some more reviews. Uh, I might even do a year-end wrap-up. Who knows? But until then, this is me, Barbara. And for Tobias and Evelyn, Roger and Vitoire, I wish you Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas, blessed Kwanzaa. Hopefully I'll do another review before the new year, but just in case I miss you, happy new year. Thank you, everybody. I will see you all really soon.
Take care. Bye-bye.